Wait, wait, wait. How, how did they do that? They threw two Ender Eyes and then magically spawned inside of the Stronghold. How is that possible? The Ender Eye, when thrown, points you in the direction of where the Stronghold is. It's kind of like a giant neon arrow, showing you the general direction you should be walking to find the closest Stronghold. If you've ever gone to find the End Portal, the usual strategy is to throw an eye, walk a couple hundred blocks in the direction it points you, and then throw another eye. Keep doing that until the eye suddenly goes in the other direction, and that way you know that the Stronghold is between the last two spots that you threw it. This is fine, and the natural thing that anyone would think to do, but usually you have to bring a couple extra eyes just in case some of them break before you get there. Speedrunners can't afford to just bring a few extra eyes, they need a method that uses as few as possible. How would they do that? Well, like many things in life, the answer was inside all along, specifically inside the rules for the speedrun. Speedrun.com has a whitelist of allowed external software, and they specifically allow a tool called Ninja Brain Bot, made by runner Ninja Brain. They have a PhD in mathematics, by the way, uh, and they decided to use it to make a Minecraft stronghold finder, so that's pretty cool. This allows you to throw an ender eye, look at it, then press F3 plus C. This copies a teleport command to your clipboard of your exact coordinates and the direction that you're facing. The bot extracts this, does some magic voodoo to it, and gives you the likelihood that the stronghold is at a given set of coordinates. Move to a different spot and repeat this until the calculator tells you that you're good, then go back to the nether and build a portal where the magic box tells you, and you have a good chance of ending up inside the stronghold. So yeah, that's how they do it. And if that's all you care about, then that's fine. You can now find the stronghold. Somehow. Most YouTubers stop here, saying that the math beyond this point is way too complicated. Uh, it, it's, it's high school algebra, by the way. Sure, I can find the stronghold using magical black box, but what is actually going on inside that box? Well, let's just look at the source code. Oh my god. Why in the world is this so complicated? Okay, well, let's look at the provided PDF of the map. Holy. Y'all, it is not this complicated, I swear. Okay, so we can look at it in 2D. Why? Nope, it's not here. When you throw an ender eye, you can make a line that goes through you, the thrown ender eye, and the stronghold. This is the stronghold line, because we know that the stronghold has to be somewhere along here. What we want to figure out is where along this line it actually is. To do this, we need to throw a second eye, which will give us a second stronghold line. And since it has to be on the first line and the second line, there's only one spot it can be, which is where these two lines cross over. And that's the baseline magic voodoo that the computer's doing. It's finding where the two lines intersect. Somehow. But this, again, was not enough for me. I want to know the actual math that you could do to find this. And I was actually surprised at how easy it is. You should only need a good grasp on algebra to understand how this works. Okay, so we record the x and z coordinates of where we're standing, throw an i, look at it, and record the angle. That's this number. Now go to some other spot to the left or right, this isn't very precise, and do it again. Minecraft does its angles in a weird way, so we have to modify them first. If the angle we measured is negative, we have to add 270 to it. And if it's positive, subtract 90. We're gonna call these the augmented angles, and we can just annihilate the other ones. Okay, now don't panic. Don't, don't panic. But we're gonna use a tiny bit of trig, okay? Okay, shh, shh. Okay, calm down, calm down. You're gonna get through this. We got this. You don't have to understand it, but just know that when you take the tangent of the augmented angle, you get the slope of the stronghold line. So we just take the tangent using degrees, and now we have the slope of our line. Wait a second, we have a point and a slope? <gasps> I'm gonna change the regular point slope form equation to this one here. So we put in our x, z, and slope into this, and we get out an equation that we can actually use. Now we have a system of equations, so just solve them in whatever way is your favorite. I'll use elimination to get rid of the z's, solve for the x-coordinate, and then plug that x-coordinate back into one of the equations to get the z-coordinate. And just like that, you have the approximate coordinates of where the stronghold is. Okay, that wasn't so bad, but if you want to become the computer and just plug in the values, you can go to the Desmos page that's in the description. Change the variables to the recorded coordinates and the augmented angles, then zoom out and look for the intersection of the two lines that have formed. Also, these two circles are here because the intersection should be between these two circles. If it's not, and you're not like super far away from zero zero, then you've done something wrong. If you click on one of the lines, there should be a gray point at the crossing. 
that's roughly where the stronghold is. I say roughly because this method is not super precise, but that's fine because you aren't in a speedrun. <laughs> If you were, you would just use the bot. You can confirm when you get there by just throwing another eye to find the exact chunk where it is. But getting it slightly wrong can completely kill a speedrun. Also, if you want to know more about some of the hand wavy bits, I've got more explanation in the description that I just straight cut out of the- it's just straight out of the script. Okay, YouTuber, you're so smart and beautiful and lovely and amazing, but what the hell is going on here? After a single eye throw, the bot told them that that was enough information to know the exact coordinates of the stronghold. How is that possible? Okay, so the method I just explained does work, and is simple and easy to visually explain. However, it's loosey and goosey, which is not acceptable in the speedrun. The people using Ninja Brain Bot want to put a portal down and spawn inside of the stronghold from hundreds of blocks away. This requires crazy precision from both the algorithm and the runner. They use a completely different method, which allows you to add a bunch of extra information on top of this. Which is why we need that complicated paper and so much source code. This is what Ninja Brain Bot is actually doing. First, it takes into account the bizarre way that strongholds spawn. Unlike every other structure in the game, they spawn in gigantic rings out from the center of the world, with more and more spawning the further you go out. Except for after 24,000 blocks, they just stop spawning altogether. You may be thinking, isn't that only 2% of a percent of a percent of the total area of the world covered? Yeah. Anyways, for this video, all we care about is the innermost circle, since that's the only one that speedrunners are going to be interacting with. It's a donut with three tasty strongholds inside. Another consideration is how the speedrun actually works. Think about it, you start the run, get to the nether, get pearls, blaze rods, and ender eyes. How do you find the stronghold if you're in the nether the whole time? Well, you have to blindly go back to the overworld for a second. But when you do this, the portal can be anywhere that the runner wants. So the best strategy is to go out to around the middle of the ring so the throw is most likely to be useful. So the runner is consciously moving towards these coordinates before going back to the overworld. It also corrects for the fact that you're human and thus cannot measure the angle perfectly every time. You have to calibrate it so it knows how much to trust you. If you're Joe Generic, it knows that you didn't record perfectly accurate data, so it'll give you a wide range of possible locations. But if you are Joe Speedrun and get really precise, you can lower the standard deviation down so the software actually trusts you to give it accurate readings. We also need to understand how the Ender Eye works on a deeper level. It doesn't just point to anywhere inside the Stronghold Chunk, it points to the exact center of it. This means that it isn't a sea of infinite possibilities, but rather a grid of possible dots, those being the centers of all the chunks. So, in theory, you could just follow the stronghold line until it goes exactly through the center of a chunk, and that will be the stronghold chunk. But in the quote-unquote real world, it's a bit different. I've been describing the stronghold line as a line, but that's the theoretical mathland ideal of what it actually is. It's more of like a stronghold cone, and the more precise your measurement, the more narrow it is. You cannot get perfect precision in vanilla, so we always have to settle for the cone in some capacity. The bot is checking which chunk centers the cone goes through, so low precision means more false positives. As a result, the math is actually easier for this method than with the 2i method. A lot of the difficulty is moved over to the runner, who needs to take very precise measurements like, like more precision than the game can normally offer. The runner needs to be accurate to 0.01 degrees for this to work, which is why we're doing all this stuff to squeak out as much precision as we possibly can. But if you think about it, wouldn't the cone go through like multiple strongholds in a row? Like in this situation, if the possible strongholds are here and here, how do you know which one it is? Well, that's where that normal distribution curve from earlier comes in. The strongholds usually arrange themselves into a standard yield sign formation, so some places are way more likely to have them than others. So in this situation, this one is overwhelmingly likely to be the correct one, because if it was the other one, then all the strongholds would have to be clumped up next to each other, which is extremely unlikely. Likely. Only with all of these parts combined can the bot give you an accurate reading after a single throw. Okay, so let's break down what happens in this clip. Okay, first they get in and out of a boat, then F3 plus C immediately. This resets their crosshair so they can be accurate to six decimal places instead of the normal two and it tells Ninja Brain Bot to use that extra precision in the calculation. They also go into their settings before the run even starts to set their sensitivity to a precise value so they don't skip any pixels when moving. That's how precise this is.
their sensitivity is basically locked, so to get slower feeling sensitivity when measuring the eye, raw mass output is turned off. FOV is set to 30, partly to zoom in and partly because it's actually incorporated in the measurements. Then we use a script that blows the game up to 16,000 pixels tall, making it super zoomed in on the screen. Pause and unpause the game over and over until the crosshair is just kissing the middle of the eye, and finally, F3 plus C captures the exact angle and position. But that actually is in the end. Right before they captured it, they took note of which pixel of the eye was wider than the other two. So in this situation, the left pixel and right pixel of the eye are wider than the middle pixel, so they have to move the measurement to the right by 0.1 degrees, which you can see in the right column because there's a right arrow and a green 0.1 which should give them the perfect angle. If you could do all of this consistently inside of a speedrun, you can find the stronghold in a single eye throw every single time. This is the highest echelon of what is possible with Endry technology. These are the lengths that players must go to to even come close to competing with Chunk Base. Good night. Hey, uh, if, if you like this video uh, and you want me to keep making videos, then you should subscribe so that I can keep doing that. that. That's just a great way to keep the metaphorical lights on. Obviously, not keeping any actual lights on right now, but yeah. I figured out that there was a free recording studio in, like near me, so I could just go in and record this audio. So that was why, one, it sounded really good, at least to my standards, and two, uh, my neck does not hurt right now, so that's good. And uh, I think that's it. Goodbye. Oh, also, I'm on Patreon.